So I'll share a little bit first um, about the exercise before doing it. Um, one of the things that I think is unusual about my experience is that I don't feel a separation between consciousness, substance, light, geometries, physics, math. They're all, they're all the same to me. And I can see the differentiation between them. But when I'm resting with an experience, they're all, to, they're all together. And so sometimes I'm quiet because the system is discerning how to sort them out to be able to speak language that makes sense to our mind because our mind recognizes those as different. But they're, they're not actually. It's, it's, it's one gorgeous uh, happening. <laughs> and uh, and perceiving in one way or another, bringing attention to one of those surfaces of the diamond or one of those qualities or distinctions, bringing attention to one of those more than another can be really useful at different times, both in awakening uh, as well as um, surrendering through some identified moment, through conditioning, through substance of the conditioning. And I have a felt sense of what this exercise wants to be. And I'm curious myself to see how the words are going to unravel <laughs> to share it with you. Um, So as light and sound, we in our individuality are a unique signature of that. Light and sound are also substance. So there is a form to your individuated nature. It's obvious in your bodies that your bodies are individual and separate. When you see someone from behind walking down the street who you know, and you know them not based on their clothes or you know that they're there, your system is recognizing their signature. You're, you're, you're recognizing what I'm speaking about. And what I'm interested in as part of this exercise is for you to actually recognize yourself that way, to recognize your felt sense signature. And I see that through all these uh, details, which may or may not be useful for me to share, because I don't want your mind to get caught up. but I'll share just a little bit in case it's useful. And if it's not, just toss it away. <laughs> Anything that I speak about has a higher octave. So whatever I'm saying, it's just from one, it's just one, um, one lens, one, one, uh, how do I say this? Any bit of form that I am naming has a deeper resonance to it and could be described in a different way. So even though I may use words to describe something in some way, to not let my words 
lock your mind in on that's what it is supposed to look like. So describing this table from here, I can see that you can see through it. Um, it has a circular sort of quality to it, right? You can sit underneath it and you would describe it differently. If the light is hitting on it and making such an incredible reflection that you can't see through it, you wouldn't say you could see through it. So, but all are true. And ideally, my words describe in such a way to point you to your own authentic experience of what I'm speaking about. And if it looks different, that's okay. And then we have time in this week to ask questions. So, so there's an exchange and feedback that can happen to, to clarify. Because when we start opening to this larger sensibility of our being, we can have questions and having some guidance. So maybe you've only seen the table from two directions and then you're seeing it from a third, but you're not quite sure if that's what you're seeing. And so for someone who's seen it in a lot of different directions, it's just helpful to ask, well, what about, what about this? You know, so, so that's part of what our, our dialogue is about, is helping to clarify your wisdom. One example of this is I'll often speak about this core flow. What I experience is this, uh, a, core, a core flow which has many aspects to it. It's, it's the alignment of the spine. It's where the kundalini flows. It's, it's cessation nothingness, where everything collapses into the center of the toroidal field of the universe. <laughs> it's a, uh, a orientation to, to be in the world from, it's an orientation to collapse back into and not exist. It's the access through all the dimensional bodies of your individuated perceptual field on each of these different dimensions of being. It's the trajectory of source out through itself into its expressions of manifestation with a, a, a pathway that your signature can recognize the individuated sense of me all the way through back as oneness. It's where you rest when you're in the individuation and in the oneness of whatever plane you're perceiving through. There can be a sense of alignment and that, that line that I'm speaking of and it can also be experienced as no point, no time, no space, no reference point of everything and nothing simultaneously as the, the center, what I'll sometimes call the centerless center. So a centerless center doesn't have points, doesn't have a, a line. And so when I speak about my experience also being physics, this starts to get into physics of consciousness being in a single point projects itself out and then a line has been made. That's your core flow, which you can experience vertically and you can experience collapse with no time, no space, nothingness. And so we are this living mystery manifesting through these layers as, 
and as our experience in this moment, experiencing then the realm of the earth, this galaxy, humanity, this body, these interactions. But the totality of everything is present. Period. And so in our human orientation, since most of us haven't been taught what's true, we haven't been taught what we are, we orient through the lens of what we've been taught of substance and form and identity and who we think we are. And so it can seem unfamiliar or scary to start opening to a centerless center or opening to seeing the table from a zillion different angles and dissolving into the atoms of liquid glass. So, so my, my interest, my desire in the moment is to support your comfort levels recognizing what you are. And the same way you know your body here, to know your body in these larger dimensional bodies. <laughs> the words that pop into my being are, why? Why is that my desire? <laughs> And then the answer that just followed is, because it's fun, <laughs> right? We're just, we're just outrageously incredible existence. And we could be having a whole lot more fun than we are actually having. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I have taken myself far too seriously to come to where I am. <laughs> so I understand the seriousness of it. <laughs> I, I get that. But um, yeah, it's not the point in a certain way. Part of the point is, is the exquisiteness of what's happening, the, ex the exquisiteness of what we are and of, yeah of what we're doing and unfolding and creating. So I want to add another piece here. And it may be that I speak more about this later. I'm not sure how this relates to the exercise. If it does, we'll find out. Um, this power of creation, we, we are that. We, we are that. And the capacity to remake ourself is infinite. The conditioning is just something we've made. And we don't necessarily have to keep wrestling with it. It was made in a particular field of frequency. And part of the intention of this retreat is to help you shift your frequency and to rest in a frequency that was not the frequency in which you made that conditioning. And it's much easier to dissolve the conditioning from the new frequency, from the higher frequency.
And so it does relate to the exercise. (laughs) This is also just a demonstration of speaking from not knowing and how wisdom and knowing arises from knowing nothing. I have no idea what's coming out of my mouth. And so the value of resting and recognizing your signature, the way that we're going to do it is to help you see your signature on different levels. Because part of your signature now carries your conditioning. It has the flavor of the stories you made before that you're still working with. And so part of the exercise will be to start recognizing these different octaves of your blueprint, of your signature. And this is a place where fabric or qualitative sense or substance is a useful lens in dissolving conditioning. Because when you start recognizing things as a fabric, you're not so identified with them. You're not as embedded in it. And then it's easier to rest in a a higher frequency while feeling a fabric that has qualities in it, densities, densities in it, distortions in it, stories in it, and to recognize them as that and rest in the higher frequency while you do nothing and rest in the allowance of the meeting of the higher light frequency with the stories that have been made from a a denser frequency and be with the substance shifting. Sometimes it's easy and sometimes it's tricky and you'll most likely start to get a sense of what I'm talking about And, and in the exercise if consciousness, your sense of self, starts to feel the substance of something that's starting to shift and start to feel yourself want it or, or like, oh no, no, I, I'm not ready to let go of that one. You can start to then, there's nothing wrong with that and the, the beauty of that is that it, it helps start to clarify as you open to your larger perceptual field, it starts to help you clarify when consciousness is starting to identify with something and feel the identification with that substance. So you were seeing it as substance and then you can start to feel as it starts to move, it tugs on you. It's like, oh, wait a minute. And you can feel then that descent into that experience where identification is then, I am that, right? And so there's nothing wrong with this. This is the whole game. This is the whole game of one single consciousness manifesting itself in this multiplicity to go into itself deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper to taste itself, know itself, explore itself from every angle. And so each of you as this one singular consciousness are the eyes of the one seeing itself through an individual lens with a unique perspective. So I'll say that again. You are all the one seeing yourself in gorgeousness in all these angles, all these views. And it can't be done without the individuation. It can't be done without that. 
So it's brilliant. And so your identification is not a problem. It is a deeper exploration of something. And yet when oneness tosses itself out into all these lenses, the same principles so far that I can see apply in all the dimensions. And it's no different than a breath where there is an inhale and an exhale and an inhale and an exhale. And so in, your, in the exhale, in the oneness of your exhale of you here in this moment, the inhale is that call back in. And that call back in is so compelling that once you have a taste of it, there's no going back. And there's a deep call to no truth. And part of the way that inhale feels is it feels unbelievably exquisite, which is why every time you have a more expanded experience, you want more. That's the nature of the inhale. And so there's no problem with the exhale and there's no problem with the inhale. And when you have been fully inhaled back into yourself, you're going to exhale again because you like it. <laughs> right? There's an exquisiteness that is happening. And in terms of that quality of the, the collapsing, and there's, there are paradoxes throughout. So if my words sound the opposite of what I just said, it's because it's true. There's a paradox happening always. So when we collapse into a small moment of identification, we can feel the, the condensing of it. It's like a condensing in through a lens, and then we suddenly pop into that reality. So if we're doing the exercise that I'll go into more. Um, and there's a, a resting in a higher frequency, uh, a pull. You start to feel an attachment and a slide, a slide into a place of a story. And then suddenly you can then be perceiving from, oh yeah, that person bugs me, you know, of this, the slide into a perspective. And then often there can be a judgment, like once you've been on the spiritual path, that, that call back in has, has really started. If one has been around certain judgments, then one can judge oneself. Oh, I shouldn't have that thought. Or I, you know, and you can see that, that, that quality of the, the me, the awareness, has then popped into a perspective and then perceives from there. And often in this, people can feel like they lost it. It's like, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know? How do I get back? Right? And, 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 but if we start to understand that it's all beauty, and you just wanted to taste out that lens a little bit more, okay. So you're hanging out in judgment, hanging out in irritation. That person is bugging you. It means then there's beauty there. There's a gift there. There's a treasure there that hasn't been fully gleaned. And so you went back to get the treasure. When I was in college, even though I wouldn't say this awakening stuff had started, I was not normal. And I, I remember when someone bugged me, like in class, like in college, like, you know, 200 people in a room and like the person that bugs me stands out. I would sit next to them because they bugged me so much. So I would sit next to them because I figured there was a reason they were bugging me and I needed to understand. So I would, I would sit with that and discover that there was something about them that either I did 
um, some aspect of myself I had disassociated. So it was creating irritation on the inside because it was dis you know, disassociated. I didn't like that part, but they were doing it. So it highlighted as a mirror, because we're one, the place where there was a sense of irritation internally. I would feel irritated by them, have a judgment about their thing. And then in the sitting with that, I would discover, oh, oh, I do that. Or that's me. And then, and then it was a gift. And then I would get to be with that story on the inside and it would resolve. And more often than not, that person became a best friend. Because we had a lot in common. <laughs> you know? And, but then it would transform. It would transform. So, this is the beauty of, of oneness creating different realms of experience where we cast ourselves into this realm of humanity and then cast ourselves into all these crazy wild engagements and tell stories about each other when it's just us telling stories about ourselves as one to understand the nuances and explore them. So in this, in this exercise, as we move through these different layers and when we're in one realm, if we recognize there's beauty in it and perfection in it, it's easier to then have access to the other realms again. If we have been in a higher frequency, felt the, the tug and the, tr the traction of an identification with a particular storyline or conditioning and have, have zipped down the rabbit hole into that pers their perspective and then are peering out of it feeling stuck and that you just lost something. If you recognize that is God having a perspective it wants to have, if you recognize that is divine tasting, it can help you have access to the other realms, the other layers of yourself again. Not because you're trying to, but, be re but because you recognize that moment is beautiful. And you recognize there's something valuable about it. I often experience all these realms simultaneously now. But consciousness still does that, wants to come into a particular lens to have a particular experience. Suddenly wants to be a sister or a daughter or a friend to have the gorgeousness of that experience where the singing of the universe isn't as loud of itself in that way but what wants to be loud is the love of a friend on a rock in the sun and so there's a the a permeable fluidity. The way that I've spoken about surrendering through a lens is what my experience has been and consistently still is depending on what needs to be surrendered through which has been described with the way I have described has been surrendering uh, either through the centerless center or surrendering through uh, what I would call the, the surrender point to open in meditation. Where is the surrender point? It's a quality of allowing the sense of self to 
collapse back into itself where it can't see and can't know itself. So I'm also talking about physics. So when I am speaking of these different realms of being, light body, soul body, human being, there's a sense of a, the, the alignment in that, that pathway. And when I'm open through all the realms, I still can feel that pathway, but I'm open in all of them and seeing through all of them in a, a wholeness. And this is no different from you when you are feeling your mental body and your emotional body and your physical body resting in a state of harmony and love and ease and beingness. Those Quality, those aspects all have their own dimensions as well. Your, your mind, your mental field has a different qualitative frequency than your emotional field and the, from your physical body. And yet they all come together to create the oneness of your humanness. And when you're resting as that, there's a seamlessness that's cohesive. So it's no different when you open up through these other bodies and they're open and functioning. It's the same truth, octave after octave after octave, larger through down to the smaller. It's the same truth gifting itself experiences on the smaller and smaller scale to become more and more refined and precise in its knowing of itself. and it doesn't stop. So the truth that's here now will open to a larger one. And beings that are already functioning at five octaves higher than where I'm functioning were open to the next three. Like there's no, there's no hierarchy in that it's the same truth. So I'm wanting to just point to the wisdom of you now that you already have access to now in your humanness now. You don't have to open to any big cosmic yada yada to open to the truth of what I'm speaking of right now. Right? They're all fractals of each other. The same, same truth. And so there can be this, uh, in this awareness I can feel the, that pathway through from source all the way through that core flow, that access, that, that, that line. I'm just going to put this all out there. It's recorded. You can listen to it later. I'm just giving a lot of information. There's, I also experience this vertical flow and then the, the cross. It's, it's, the, the cross, the vertical aspect of consciousness, and then the line, this is also math, this is also physics, you create a line this way, and then you actually can have a sphere. You have the source line out from yourself, and then around yourself, you can create realms. You can create planes of existence. And so I'll feel consciousness through that, and then I'll also feel in through the oneness of myself when I open through the whole plane. And as you start to orient, you, you can start to have a deeper understanding of your own map of existence and then realize where you are in yourself in the oneness and in your individual perceptual field. So what I wanted to speak about just this moment is naming this vertical flow and that you can also feel... Um, awareness as your one as oneness that's what i'm saying as your oneness right what i mean by that is you're seeing it through an individual lens so you're open through the oneness but through your individual lens so your oneness 
That's why those words are coming out. So through your oneness, you can then see the oneness of you of each of these planes of existence. So when you're resting in depending on <clears throat> where your resting point of your sense of self is, your perceptual field will open and you'll perceive things according to where your consciousness is resting. This is all going to link together. There's just a lot coming out. So earlier on when I was resting in the personality, and the perceptual field open to past lives. There was a sense of the soul being above and that that is where the, the information came from. And then at some point when those layers became more integrated, there was a resting more in the soul body as I was in my human body. And then seeing from that plane in my human body, I had access to my past lives and how I was relating to everybody and would have access to other people's past lives from that perceptual field. Once I had opened from the oneness of the soul, I mean, my, sorry, once I opened from the individual nature of the soul to the oneness of that whole plane, then I was seeing everybody's. So... And then shifting to a next higher octave, then the soul body is inside. And then the past lives are then seen down below. And in terms of our recognizing our inner environment, and my desire to support you knowing yourself, part of it is learning how to navigate and recognize where you are within yourself. Because then you can get back home, right? Everywhere is home, but sometimes when we are, when we are out in an experience, we lose track of our center. We lose track of that sensation. And all of this is just physics for one consciousness to organize itself and orient itself. And your call to wake up or to go deeper in your awakening <coughs> is the physics of consciousness just pulling yourself back, pulling yourself back into a deeper awareness. All of these things I'm speaking of are, are consciousness. So the draw itself, that quality of physics or gravity, that itself has its own consciousness, a sense of I am that functions as that. In the past, I used to speak about you being the player, the, the player piece, the game board, the rules, the physics. Right, you're the whole thing. So you are just having one awesome game. So what I was sharing a little while ago um, around the the quality of sensation when I would surrender from a place where I was identified, where I was already so deeply in it, I couldn't find any pathway back into anything else and had felt like I had lost that expansive place. You know, so when you're in, when you're in a focused point that just seems completely inclusive of itself, And when I said the physics to it, and then you're like, like what? What is she talking about? Right? So, so the, 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 huh? Don't read my 
my mind. <laughs> I'm not reading it. It's just, you're just sharing it with me. Um, um, you, were, you, you spilled it out. I didn't hear anyone else's thought. I just heard yours because it spilled out. <laughs> like, oh! <laughs> so, um, so physics, right? This is like, uh, and I haven't studied quantum physics, but what I hear about it, this sounds like it. <laughs> <laughs> so it feels like the, 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 the quantum thing of collapsing back in, collapsing back into itself. And that, that apparently the part that I, got, that I got good at, that I got practiced at, and that I have taught a lot about, is the surrendering. Where you meet, meet the moment in such a way that you collapse back in. And the way I describe this core flow of being this alignment with all this magnificence to it, but also the centerless center. It has a quality of center, so you know how to find it. But when you surrender into it, it's nowhere. And so I would have these practices of sometimes I could find that thread backwards to myself, to the sense of identity that rests in oneness, that still is ind has an individuated feeling. Sometimes I could follow that back from an experience. I could trace my judgment trace my judgment to a quality in myself, to then a judgment in myself, a feeling of not enough, uh, and then, uh, yeah, usually that was the bottom one for me. Um, and then meet that feeling and surrender through it. Sometimes I could follow a pathway that had a qualitative you know, like colors on a fabric tapestry, following the, the rougher threads to the finer ones to come into the, the, the felt sense of the emotional hurt and then surrender through that into a truth and it would open. And there was a qualitative sense of feeling fabric all the way through and then the opening through would then to be, a, again, a feeling of light and love and wholeness and God and truth. So there was a, a quality, the, the two sides of the coin of the being and the not being, or the light and the empty darkness, right? And so all that was through the side of light, feeling, fabric, quality, seeing. And I could follow that all the way through. Another way to get to that two sides of the same coin that's one is through the, the nothingness, the emptiness, the not knowing. And that's what I feel as the core flow. Uh, the, like the core flow being the, the center of a toroidal field where the beingness and the existence is all on the outside of that field, which then collapses back into primordial nothingness, not knowing that it, you, things emanate out of that and then collapse back in. And I experience one of the larger dimensional bodies as, as a toroidal field. And then I'll see, I don't know, lines of light, you know, like, like these pathways of creation, then creating itself and then calling itself back in where it gets recreated, but it's happening outside of time, seamlessly. Um, I'll share more about that some other time. So, so in the beginning, when I was in my humanness, more the personality and soul, kind of bouncing back and forth in those, my orientation point for surrender was through those fabrics when I was describing the judgment the self-hurt or you know what whatever those those emotional stories we 
create with a, a, a thought, an emotion, another thought and an emotion. We kind of move through these layers of our creating our storylines to get to the origin source of that exploration, which we can often feel as a, a wound, as a pain. Um, but the other way is through that collapsing and that surrender where you can't see. There's nothing to follow. And some people can feel this as a falling out in or a jumping out into the nothing. Some people can feel it just deep in their center. Some people feel it as a falling back. I have also heard the koan of, um, you know, going through the eye of a needle. Haven't had any Zen training in this lifetime. The way I relate to that is also what I'm speaking about, where consciousness has to surrender itself, where it can't see into something so small. And, and for me, I would feel it as a falling back or if any of you have gone unconscious and had the experience of all of your world, woo, it's like all of a sudden the whole thing starts to collapse, the visual starts to collapse, the senses start to collapse, and it collapses back into unconsciousness. Only the difference here is you don't actually go unconscious. Mm -hmm. You let go of the perceptual field, the lens you're seeing from, to surrender through to actually then pop into a different lens of perception or pop into no perception resting as resting where a lens is not accessible and one can be in that for a short period of time long period of time it totally depends So when I was talking about this as physics, just to uh, address that uh, response, there are paradoxes everywhere. And so when I speak about this line of orientation, it's a very clear line. It's a very clear axis. And yet, The, the paradox is like right, Richard gets right, this, gets right? It. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Those are my words, exactly, right? You get it, <laughs> right? So it's yes. like, right. So, so there's a, um, but, but, but we can man up, but it manifests, right? So, so the, the, the surrendering through that eye of the needle is where you jump, where time and space and the, the pathways you've made for yourself, you don't need. You just, you just collapse the whole structure of the form of your existence into where that form is not. I remember when I was a kid, there was this uh, book series. Someone I'm sure will remember the name of the book when I mention the part of the story. So there was something in the story called a tesseract. Thank you. Wrinkle in time. And, and there were these witches, right? These wise women that from another dimension that were sharing how they traveled. And they put a string, held it, and had an ant. You know, it's saying the way most of you travel is you walk across the string from one set of fingers <coughs> to the other. And she said, we do this. It's a tesseract. You just go from there to there. So following the pathway of the storyline, the, the mind, the belief, the emotion, the belief, the emotion, the belief, to the wound, to surrendering, is 
a valuable walking along the thread. Sometimes w that's what we want to do because there's so much richness in that. And sometimes we just do the tesseract. I don't, I, don't, I don't know enough about wormholes to, for me to be able to use that as an example. That it may be the way you understand it, that it, it works for you, and it speaks to what I'm speaking of. The more that I open, the wormholes are actually within me, like as I open in that, that consciousness, and I haven't explored them, because they go into different universes, and I, and I haven't... I'll do it in my dream time. Um, but I relate to them more as a, as a travel point in the universe. So I don't know if the toroidal field itself is a wormhole or not. I, I don't know. Um, so I, it's like things are specific enough in me that I can't say and I can't be general in it. Um, The other way I had shared about this experience, which may be useful for people too, and some of you may have heard this, is when I was learning shiatsu, my, um, my, uh, my teacher had said to find, on a meridian, to find the yin spot and the yang spot. So we're feeling energy flows in the, you know, in the body, and so I had my thumb on each, and um, her, her instructions were to surrender through the, to, or to breathe through the Dan Tien, I think was what her direction was. Um, but what happened for me was the Tesseract, where both my thumbs, so my eyes were closed, both my thumbs were suddenly on top of each other, even though they were physically on different spots of, you know, on someone's arm. My thumbs were suddenly in the same spot and the meridian balanced itself out. And there was no yin and yang. It was in oneness. The meridian was flowing as it, as it should. <laughs>